This video explores the Async Task, a tool provided by Android to perform short-term processing in the background. This is part one in a four-part series on Async Task. The objectives are stated here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. This is a preview of a longer video. Visit ProfessorAndroid.com for more information. It will be helpful for this video if you read the documentation on Async Task at the Android Developer website. Okay, so it's time to take a look at doing some processing in the background. Now when we think about doing processing in the background, there's really two categories. Short-term processing in the background, long-term processing in the background. Scenarios. You're on an activity and you need to download a photograph or two, a short video, or do a database query that may take more than just a moment. You're going to want to put those things in their own thread of execution because if you don't, then you're blocking your user interface. Whenever you're in an activity and you do a task that just takes more than a moment, while that task is going on, the user of your application is not able to interact with the user interface and will bring up an activity not responding message and they'll kill off your activity. So it's crucial that anything that just takes more than a moment, you spawn off into its own thread of execution. And Instead of having to manage your own threads and create your own handlers and all that, if you haven't done that before, Android makes a nice little utility for you called the async task that's made to handle that. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. The other scenario you might be involved with is maybe you're making a stock tracking application, something like that, and you want to, for a long period of time, say, hey, has the price changed? Hey, has the price changed? Let's check the price of that stock now and you want to have a very long running separate thread of execution out there that's constantly performing some task at some interval. That might be a time that you may want to use what's called a service. And we won't be handling services in these first sets of videos. We'll be stopping in terms of threading at the async task. But I intend on following this set of videos up with an advanced Android programming set of videos where we'll dive into using services. All I've done to get ready for this demo is created a project called Async Task No Frag. I called it No Frag because we're going to solve it twice. Once without fragments and once with fragments. API 11 forward, they recommend that you put your async tasks inside of fragments. Before API 11, you didn't have fragments available, and so we'll solve it the classic way when fragments weren't available. However, of course, we've learned you could still use your compatibility package if you choose to and still use fragments for an async task in earlier APIs. In addition to that, I came into the main activity and, and I deleted my on create options menu method because I'm not planning on adding a menu. And I deleted my menus folder from my res folder for the same reason. And I came into my main activity XML layout file and change from a relative layout to a linear layout and set its orientation to vertical. And that's all the pre-work that I've done on this project. So let's dive into the user interface first and come in here and place a button on the screen. And this button is just going to be to start that background process in motion. Now when you design your activity, you might not need a button for that. You might just instantly go out and do some database query and the user may not be in control of starting the async task you may be, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to explicitly have the user start the async task in motion. So we'll come in there and just give the button a new name. I'm going to make this a very generic template and call it BTN process, some process that needs to be started in the background. We'll come in here on the text of the button and just call it start process. And we'll get ready to wire up our button click event as well by coming down here to the on click event and say we called this BTN process and let's give it an on click. Then the next thing we want to do is take a look at progress bars. This is the perfect scenario to do this. We've got some process going on in the background. Let's assume that the user needs to be aware of how much longer that is before the process is done and it gives us a great opportunity to take a look at how we can use that progress bar. So we'll do that as well and we'll just call this PB for progress bar process. And the next thing we might want to do is also, so we can take a look at everything that's going on along the journey, is come in here and give it a text view as well. So we'll give it text updates as well as progress bar updates as our process is running in the background. 
So we'll just call this something like text view status. Okay, that looks great. Maybe we want to provide some padding around those. So let's just go ahead and add some margins to 2DP to add a little bit more separation around these views. Let's go ahead and change the text of that text view. It's default original text to say status updates, although that's just going to immediately change once the button is pressed. Okay, so we've got our user interface stubbed in. Let's go ahead and uh, start by putting in our button click event in our activity. So we know we need to make that a public method. It's a void return type, and it needs to send in a view, control shift O. And then we know in this activity, the other things we're going to need, we're going to need a handle on our progress bar. We're gonna need a handle on our text view. And we might even want a handle on our button as well, so that once the process is started in motion, we may choose to disable our button so the process can't be started in motion a second time if that's our desire. Let's just go ahead and grab a handle to all three of those views and make them instance variables of our class. And I've got my snippets to help me do that. So I'm going to say the first one I have here was called BTN process. And I'm going to fix this in just a moment. This the snippets help me get this designed. The next thing I had is a text view. And we know that was called text view status. And the third thing we're going to need is a progress bar. So we can say progress bar, find view by ID, dot progress bar. Notice I have errors on these, and I believe that's just because I didn't save my XML layout file. So if I go back and save that and come back, that should clean those up for us. And we want this to be called progress bar progress. Change the name here as well. And I just did it this way because I had those snippets already in play. Had I wanted to create those in the on create or the button click, I could have used these just how they were here or here, but I wanted them to be instance variables. And so now what I need to do is copy and paste these down here. Remove the data type and remove the find view by ID from here because we know we can't do a find view by ID until after the set content view has occurred. And for encapsulation, we could go ahead and set those to private. Okay, so our user interface is inflated. We have handles to the three most important things in our code. Control Shift F will format our code for us and make it pretty. Now we can go about the business of saying, first of all, why would we need to have an async task in the first place or to spawn a separate thread of execution? Let's take a look at that. And what I'm going to do is come into my button click event and just say while true and simulate that I'm out here in this button click event and some process is happening for a while because you only have a single thread of execution in your UI thread. So if I click this button and it's off doing something for a while, the user can't interact with any other control on the user interface and the UI thread is blocked until this button click event is done. We move on.